Welcome to Live with Prima. My name is Frank Garcia. Let me know if you can hear me and see me okay. We're going to be starting on this amazing project I worked on today. I used my new uh, Magnetic Dossier album. This is a brand new album that just came out in summer. I'm really excited to show you guys because it's really neat. If you can see me and hear me, let me know. Hi, Sandra. And Tiff and everyone. Hello. Okay, so it seems you guys can hear me okay. All right, so... I'm just going to pan down the camera here real quick so you guys can see what we're working on. And this is the album. So basically I use my new album here and I like it because it's so easy and quick. You can see right here when I open it. Um, it has 12 waterfall pages and these are really awesome if you just want to do something really quick that's easy and simple. I know a lot of you guys don't have time to make full albums, but these come together very easily because we use just a journaling card. So you guys know we have all of our journaling card sets for all of our collections. These are sized perfectly for these pages. You just kind of cut them down a little bit and then you have a perfect size and it's really easy to make. So we're gonna actually make this whole album today. I'm also going to be using my new uh, remnant domes with my remnant shaker. So you can see right here, there's like a little motion inside the dome, which is really fun. I love how that looks, okay? So let me show you guys how that's done. So you can see right here, I've already pre-painted the book, it comes in a craft color, and I like that because you can paint it any color you like. So if you wanna paint it, you know, blue or yellow or whatever color you want, you can paint it. And this cover is actually magnetic. So you can see it sticks really easily, it has very strong magnets, so when you put it in, it just kinda of closes. You can put a handle here if you wanted to. I have new knobs that you can actually put on the cover if you wanted to actually do that. And then I have all of the pages here. Now I've went ahead and pre-painted all of them so you guys don't have to watch me paint, okay? So we're gonna get started here. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and uh, cover my book. So I've already kind of cut out all the pages for you guys so you guys can see um, how easy it is. I'm gonna be using um, papers from the Rossi Bell collection. And um, I love this paper, it's so pretty. Um, it kind of reminds me of Almanac. You know, we used to have that Almanac collection. Um, just love how that looks. I'm gonna go ahead and ink this real quick. And I'm just using a vintage, uh, actually walnut stain, sorry, to just ink the edges on this paper. And I have two of the same size. These are going to be six by eight and three quarters very easy measurement. You can use 12 by 12 sheets or if you wanted to you can um, make it a little smaller and use the 8 by 8 pad, whatever works. Okay, so I went ahead and inked those. Hello, hello everyone. Yes, I love this collection. It has really pretty um, accents of rose gold on it. So I'm going to go ahead and use my artisan tape for all of the paper on the outside and inside because I think it's just um, a strong tape that'll help to maintain those pages secure. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of tape here. And you know, um, this and this um, book has been very popular. A lot of people like it because it's really easy to decorate. There's not a lot of big pages, so if you're not a big uh, mini album person or you're scared of mini albums, this is a great album to start with because um, you don't have to worry about filling up a bunch of pages. And um, I know it kind of gets hard sometimes to do that because, you know, we're rushing or we don't have time. But this actually makes a great gift. It's very sturdy and um, it, it just looks really awesome. So I'm going to put some more tape on here. So again, you have to use as much tape as I do, but I like making sure that my books are secure, especially when you put a lot of heavy stuff on the cover. You don't want it to look uh, or fall apart. So now I'm going to pick which one I want on the cover. I kind of like the script or the cover, even though we're going to kind of cover most of it. But I always get people telling me, why do you cover everything up? Well, I like layers. I like things to show through. So sometimes some things need to cover it up. That's just nature 
of how everything goes. Hey Janelle, hey Cheryl. How you latest doing? Okay, so I'm gonna cover the front here and I'm just gonna go ahead and center this as best as I can. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to put the one in the back now. That looks already very pretty. Love the way that looks. Then I have the sides here, and I went ahead and cut the sides out of the same paper. Um, and the sizes on the sides are going to be two and three quarters by eight and three quarters. So that way you have the measurements. It's basically the same height as the larger ones, just uh, the width is a little bit smaller because it's the sides. Carrie's so exciting. She's going to Africa. I'm so jelly. I was just there a couple of weeks ago and it's so amazing. She's going to love it. I am sure. Okay, so I like to put a little bit of the half inch in the middle just because this is an awkward size for the paper, just to make sure it's secure. Yes, it's an awesome adventure for Carrie. So excited for her, she totally deserves that. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and center this uh, piece in the middle here. So two pieces, ladies, at two and three quarters by eight and three. Quarters. Okay, so I'm just going to put this last piece right here. Okay, looks really nice already. Now I'm going to um, just start working on um, the inside real quick because I want to get some of these pages inside covered. So I have the, this paper here, and I should probably give you the item numbers for this paper. So that's 847784 for this paper right here. And I have two pieces cut out at 8 and 3 quarters by 8 and 3 quarters. Okay. Now before I adhere those papers, I'm going to go ahead and just give a little touch up there. I'm 
I see a little piece I kind of missed. Just going to give it a little quick touch up before I adhere the paper. Okay, so as that's kind of drying, I'm going to just go ahead and ink my paper here. Now, when I'm working on the wings, on the inside wings, and I call them wings, so don't judge me. Um, I'm working on those wings. I need to make sure they're secure. And the reason is because you notice that there is this crease here. It's very important that you put enough tape. And it needs to be strong tape, otherwise it's going to buckle. So if you guys have artisan tape, it works great. Um, liquid glue tends to not work as well because it'll buckle as well. And the reason is because you're applying force right here. So as soon as you um, put it on there, it does not work that well. So make sure you guys put enough tape on here. I know you guys always uh, think I'm crazy because I put a lot of tape, but there's always a reason behind everything. So I'm going to put the tape, and you see how close I'm putting it together on the paper. It's going to be uh, very close. Okay. Thanks, Jesse. It is one of my favorite albums, I have to admit. Um, this is very fun and very easy to make. And uh, it's very quick. It's perfect for the holidays, too. If you guys are planning to do holiday gifts, the waterfall one works great because it's so easy to make. You can make a ton of them in no time and put a lot of pictures in it. So there we go with that one. I'm going to just put some tape on the other one. Hi everybody that's just joining us. I see some new people online. Hello. Okay, I had a little spot here so I'm going to add a little bit of my half inch. Okie So now that I have that, I'm going to go back to my album. I'm going to go ahead and cover the sides. So there's no particular um, choice of paper here. I'm just going to use either or. I just cut two pieces out at 8 and 3 quarters by 8 and 3 quarters, and I cut them out from different sections of the paper so that I would have two different sides. That way you don't have identical sides. Okay, so I'm going to just flip the book over this way, and I'm going to go ahead and adhere this. And you have to remember this tape is very um, not forgiving, so once it's down, it's down. And I just tend to not overthink it. Now, I did get a new bone folder. Um, my friend Ginger 
she was in Washington and she gave me this Teflon phone folder and I have to say I love it. So if you're watching Ginger, thank you so much for my little gift. I've always wanted one of these. So nice. So now when you actually um, fold this, you're not going to actually crease this with a bone folder. You're just going to fold it and it creates a, nat a natural crease because you don't want to... Um, you don't want to create uh, or, or actually rip up the fibers of the paper. So make sure you don't actually use a bone folder for that section. I just use the bone folder to reinforce the area of the tape. Just to kind of burnish the edges. So I'm going to do the other side. And again, I'm just going to use this side of the paper. I'm just going to go ahead and center it. Okay, looking good already. Now, um, we have one more piece of paper that we need to actually um, cut out because I forgot to cut that one out, which is the one for this this here. Now, um, for that part, I'm going to go ahead and measure that out. It's going to be 8 and 3 quarters by about 6. So I'm going to cut it out real quick. And um, I like this uh, pink uh, background. This one is from the Wildflower paper. It's 847760. Just going to cut this down. And I want to use this side with the more grunge thing, so I'm going to cut it from this side. And I just want to make sure it um, fits before I adhere it. going to cut off a little tiny bit just to make sure. And I'm just going to go ahead and ink it. Now this one, since it is um, just on there, I'm just going to use my tape printer because it's easier. And it does need to be um, completely adhered. Oops. Got a squeaky one this morning. I know everybody has issues with me covering stuff up, Sandra, but um, I can't help but love both sides. That's why I always get two sheets of each paper. That way I don't feel bad. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, Use it on this side. 
And then later on, if you wanted to, you can put a picture here or whatever. Okay, so we had it all covered up. We only, um, we're only missing the waterfall. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and take a piece of chipboard next. Okay, and I'm just gonna go ahead and ink the edges. And I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, my one inch artisan tape. I'm just gonna go ahead and run it along the edge of the chipboard. You want to put the the tape on all four sides. We're going to create a little frame. Going to put the other two on top of those. I always go over a little bit because I need to make sure it goes right to the edge of that chipboard. So if you need to go over it just a tad, you can. And I just cut off the excess on the edges. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of glitter to the chipboard. I'm going to put it in my little glitter pan. Be careful not to touch it. And I love using artisan tape with my with the glitter because it just works beautifully. Okay, just gonna shake out the excess. See how easy and effortless that's, that was. That's why I like using my tape because you don't have glitter everywhere. I'm going to take the glitter piece I just did, I'm going to add some foam tape.
that color is actually part of the Finna Bear uh, gold set. I actually thought I had it here, but um, it, it's actually one of the Finna Bear, um, maybe Carrie can look it up real quick. Um, it's in the gold set, the one that has the gold and the silver, and there's one that's kind of like champagne gold. That's the one I used. I left the box at home. Gonna remove these uh, pieces here. Okay, gonna go in and center this in the middle. Yep, there you go, Carrie. You got it. Luminous. Luminous. Okay, I'm going to have this piece here. I cut this out of one of the papers from the collection. And this one here is going to be slightly smaller. This one I think is about 5 by 7. Okay. I'm going to also add foam tape to that. Now, because we are adhering on top of glitter, I'm going to add um, a little bit of glue to the foam tape. I'm not doing anything, guys. I just do my thing. I just like my stuff to to hold on and keep together. That's it. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go ahead and adhere this in the center. And I just want a little bit of that glitter to show through. Now you could have used smaller tape, but I just like using the one inch just in case I'm short. So don't judge me. I just like doing my thing. Okay, so see how there's a little bit of glitter peeking through? Okay, now I'm going to get started on the top, which is the... Dome. Now, if you guys haven't seen my domes, my domes look like this. And I love these because you could do a lot with this. You can put anything you want inside, okay? And they're nice and high quality. I'm going to just open this up. And what I like is it comes with three, so you can, uh, you know, use them on different projects. 
And there is actually a die that coordinates with the dome, so you can cut out for the shape on top, but we're not using it like that today. We're using it in a different way. So I'm going to um, put this on here, and I like that background, so I'm going to go ahead and trace that out. I'm going to trace the outside of this. I'm going to go ahead and fuzzy cut that out. Of course, I am not the best fuzzy cutter. If you guys have seen my shows with Julie, she is like the master fuzzy cutter. I am not. So, there you go. Just, you know, we just know what we're good at and what we're not. So, I'm just going to cut this the best I can. And it doesn't have to be perfect, really, because you're going to cut it out later on anyway. Okay, so now once we have this, I'm going to put some foam tape in the back so it's easier for me to adhere later. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and start filling up the inside. I have um, my new remnant fragments, which come in a couple of packs. I'm using some of the sequins here. And I also have a couple of other fragments. Um, like, I put them in this little container because I think it's really cute. So I have these cute little uh, metallic beads. How cute are those? And I also have... Um, these crystals. See how sparkly those are? They're very small, but you have to be careful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rose gold sequins here that are in this pack. I'm just going to go ahead and cut, cut this out. And you have to kind of be careful so they don't get everywhere. But you want to, but what you want to do is you want to put these in the middle of your of your circle here. And you can put as many or as little as you want. I like it kind of full because that way there's more stuff going on. I'm gonna add a couple of these beads. I'm going to put my sequins in here just so that I can keep them all organized. Okay, I'm going to add a couple of these and kind of like these because I like these. I also have um, 
It's a leftover rainstone that I had at home, so I'm just going to add a couple of those to the mix here. Okay, so now you just need to be able to keep everything in the middle. Okay. Now once you're ready, you take your dome and you're gonna go ahead and put some on the lip. Now what makes my dome different than other things is that it has this really awesome lip and that's how you adhere it. Other things you have to kind of work on the edge or whatever. I know some people told me they use ornaments, but that they're really thin and cheap and they scratch easy. This doesn't. This is really easy to use. Just need to make sure none of the glue seeps into the inside. So you carefully align it with your circle. You need to make sure none of it is sticking out. Now once you have that, you're going to go ahead and take the scissors and then just cut off the excess. Okay, so now once we have that, we can take our little foam tape off. I'm gonna go back to my book here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and center this the best I can. Fun, fun. I'm going to take some of my vintage trim and I'm just going to put some on here. And this is just to cover up the lip. You can use anything you like. Some people I've, I've seen use pearls. Some people use other things. You can use whatever you like. Now because I have um, enough um, lace, I'm going to go around it again.
Okay, looking good. Just gonna clean off some of the glue that just kind of stuck on here. You need to be careful not to put glue on your dome so that it doesn't stick. I just clean it off with a baby wipe or a uh, wet towel. Okay. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of rhinestone chain. I have a little bit here that I um, had from my stash. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add that to the edges. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put some glue in the middle of that seam. Okay, that's what it looks like once you have your chain on there. Okay, looking good guys, looking good. So now we can go into the flowers. Okay, I'm gonna go and start with my biggest flower. I'm using these classic flowers I found in the warehouse. Carrie was kind of shocked that I found these. These are the Can Can Vintage Lace 539481. Love these flowers. Just going to go ahead and ruffle it up a little bit. Just going to add a little bit of ruffleness on there. I'm going to go ahead and um, add some other flowers from the collection. Um, I like these here. These are um, really pretty. These are $5.94.82. I love the centers on this flower. So pretty. Just going to ruffle it up a little bit. Gonna lift this one up a little bit and just tuck it in. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> Using these next, these are um, also from Rossi Bell. These are $5.90, $5.43. I'm going to add a couple of those. Gonna tuck that in right there. Five ninety, five fifty-seven. I'm using a couple of the flowers from here. I love this one here. This one's so pretty. Now I have some of these flowers. These are from um, her last show, last year, 577-650. I really love these flowers. So I'm just going to add one. I'm going to remove the green stuff of this. Just going to tuck this one in right here. Just thought that went well with the whole script stuff that's going on. Okay, I'm going to take another one of these because they're so pretty. Okay, looking good, guys. I'm just going to go ahead and a couple more little details. I have a couple of roses here that I want to add. These are just uh, Prima Classic roses. I'm going to just add a couple just to um, fill in the gaps. Add one up here.
Can I just add them to the gaps where I see little gaps of stuff? It doesn't have to be everywhere, but you know, everybody goes a little crazy. Adding roses, so just makes it look a little prettier. Now, I'm going to add a couple of more things here. Which I think um, needs it. Going to add a couple of pearls from my Pearls 2 package. These are my new pearls. These are 991, 944. You can see how beautiful they are. Lots of fun stuff. I'm going to just add some pearls just gonna tuck them in in different places oops I mean, I can go on and on about the pearls, but pearls do add a little bit of extra pizzazz to your projects. Okay, I think I'm pretty good on there. Let's see how this looks. Very beautiful. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of more things. I have these beautiful leaves from the collection. These are uh, 590, 598, I believe.
Okay, now since we're done with that, I can start working on the sides here. And this is what it looks like. I'm going to use one of my uh, memory hardware um, eye hooks. And I'm just going to put it on the back here. On the side, just going to screw that in. Now, actually, before I do this, I kind of forgot here. I have two pieces of this canvas I found. Now, how cute is this canvas? It's like a shimmery canvas. Just remembered I have this. I'm going to add a little bit of my tape. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add now my hook to the side. I'm just going to screw it in. I'm going to go ahead and add my chain. I have my Cote d'Azur chain, which is one of my favorites. $9.96.95. going to take a jump ring. I'm going to take some of these uh, findings that we have from Prima. I'm going to need some jump rings here, so I'm going to take my jump rings. My jump rings are from my Vegan News um, jump rings here. These are $9.96.26.
You can add anything you like on the side. I like adding these little trinkety things. They just look cute. Okay, I'm going to tie some seam binding and some lace on the side just to hide um, some of those things on the top. gonna do a little bow on the side here with my lace. And there you have that. What do you guys think? Super cute, huh? Now for the inside, I mentioned earlier, you can actually add stuff on here. So I'm going to do a couple of those just to kind of get those uh, going. Now where's my... I'm using some of the drilling cards. Now the inside has 12 pages, so um, you need 24 total cards. So I'm just gonna 
do 12 first. These are all beautiful and they're double sided, so it kind of makes it easy. And so the, the card size here is going to be five and three quarters by about roughly three and three quarters. Okay. So I'm just going to pick out 12 first. There's one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. So I'm first going to cut all these at 5 and 3 quarters. So some of these need to be cut in a different way before you cut them in 5 and 3 quarters. So I can cut them from two sides, that way it's centered. Because some of them have stains, so it just depends on how you use the cards, I guess. Okay, I'm going to go back to my book here. Now it's very hard to pick uh, the cards that you want to put on because they're also pretty, but you know, you just want to pick a couple out. Oh, but I do have to cut them down just a little bit, I forgot about that. So the size on the top needs to be about there, so I'm just going to cut those out just real quick. We should be good now. So I'm gonna just go ahead and take some tape.
Oh, if you guys love Tales of You and Me, you should wait for winter. You guys are going to be very, very excited. That's all I can say. I can't say anymore because then Carrie's going to get mad at me. Okay, let's see. How are we doing over here? Okay. Because I have that, I'm going to take my brush and just do a little bit of paint because I kind of didn't paint all the way here. I'm just going to whitewash a little bit. I didn't say anything, Carrie. I'm not in trouble. Just adding a little bit of paint on the edges just because um, I like the cards to be a little bit shorter than what they're supposed to be because you can actually just adhere the cards but I like mine to be shorter and have a little border I have an obsession with borders as you guys know so I just like mine to be a little bit centered
Okay, now you'll see once you have all the cards on there how pretty that looks. Doesn't that look pretty? How cute that is. Now really quick, because I have a couple of minutes left, I'm going to do the underside of these. And the underside is a little bit different because it is a little longer because of the way it's bound. So five and three quarters by four. So it should be easy peasy. So I'm going to pick another 12 cards. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, Okay, so I just need to cut these down. And since they're all at five and three quarters, I'm just going to cut them all a little faster. Okay, so now that we have the front, I'm just going to do the backs real quick so we could be all good and done. How's everybody doing so far? Are we hanging on? Just going to go ahead and start at the top. And just going to center that. And these um, work out really great because the underside is almost the perfect size, so you don't have to really do a lot of cutting. And I know it's hard to pick these cards, but that's why it's good to have the journaling cards because you get a lot of them in the pack, so you can use anything that anything that you like. And you'll have some leftovers anyway, so I don't worry about that because there's so many in the pack. You can use them over and over again. I love this card. It kind of reminds me of Almanac. So pretty.
I love how you get to pick all, all the cards on both sides. Looks really fun. Love how that looks. We're almost done here, guys. Just a couple more pages. Okay, this is the last one on here. Okay, you can see how cute this looks. So when you, oops, camera, come back. Okay, so when you see the cards, you can see a little peek of everything. Then you turn it around and you can see a peek of the front. How fun is that? Then over here, you can put a picture of something because this one goes on the other side. Now you have to be careful when you close this. You can't really put anything chunky right here because this is where the magnets are. See that? So you you need you can put a picture on here if you wanted to, something flat. But here you can go ahead and decorate with whatever you want. If you wanted to um, add some flowers or a photo or whatever you want, you can add it right there. Okay. Then you can decorate each one of these individually if you want to. There's a lot of room in the book, so like if you notice. When you open the book, see how much room you have to expand. Okay, so you can add definitely a lot of things. Now the finishing touch here for the book is the liquid pearls, and I used a rose gold liquid pearls. Let's see. I know some of you guys were asking, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do them right here. Now I always started an angle. And I just go around and I space them out evenly. And I just uh, let it come up first, do it at an angle, and set them down. Is there any questions? Okay, so now you want to just go all the way around, okay? And that's about it. So once you have that, you're pretty much done. Oops, my chain got caught in here. Don't know how that happened. I think I need to slide it out. So you can see here. Now I would just go around it with liquid pearls. Let me show you the finished one. See the liquid pearls on there. Just make sure to remove this. And that's about it. All right, guys. Well, I have a couple of announcements here, just really quick. Um, the next video coming up is Karen Tamir. She's going to be doing an altered Finnebear denim journal. So the video will be posted on Thursday on YouTube. So make sure you guys. Um, 
check that out. We actually are uploading uh, Thursday videos for you guys. So I hope you guys are enjoying those. They're really fun. Um, and then also Art Venture. Remember, you guys only have a, a, well, about two months, actually, to sign up. So not a lot of time to sign up for Art Venture. Um, it's quickly approaching. So it's a very exclusive event. I'm teaching there. Finneber is teaching IOD. Um, we have some amazing projects, amazing products coming out. So if you guys like projects like these, make sure you guys join us on um, at Art Venture, and that's going to be in Phoenix. Okay, so make sure you go to primamarketinginc.com for all those details. And if there's a, no more questions, um, I'm going to go. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today. I had a lot of fun. Um, and if you guys have any questions, uh, make sure you can um, email me or send me a message on Facebook, all right? Thank you so much, guys. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.